now let us discuss about algorithm specification in design and analysis of algorithms generally we can specify or we can describe or we can write an algorithm in three ways the first approach is using natural language like english the second approach is using flow chart the third approach is using pseudo code approach so in c language already we have seen the first two approaches so in da subject in algorithm subject our major focus is on specifying or describing or writing an algorithm using pseudo code notations so first let's see uh, how we can write the algorithm in uh, natural language like english as well as flow chart so the first approach is how we can write an algorithm using natural language uh, so that is nothing but step by step notation uh, let us write an algorithm for even number or odd number so step 1 is start step 2 is read a number n step 3 is we know the logic for even number if we divide a number by 2 if the remainder is 0 then we can say that the number is even otherwise the number is odd number so for that step 3 is divide the a number by 2 next step 4 if the remainder is 0 then we can say that step 4.4 then we can say that display the number as even number step 5 otherwise that means if the remainder is not 0 then display the number as odd number step 6 is stop so this is the first approach what is the second approach using flow chart notation okay we know about flow chart the symbolic uh, notation so this is for start so what is the first one the first step is start the last step is stop so first one is start symbol last one is stop next read a number n uh, so we need to use parallelogram for reading and printing next rhombus for checking the condition if n modulo 2 double equal to 0 then we can say that the number is even number so if this condition is true then yes then print the number as even number otherwise no then print the number as odd number so for printing and reading we have to use the parallelogram otherwise after that after even number or odd number we have to uh, yeah the 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 process is over so stop so the, the, these two are the first two notations so what are the first two notations using natural language like english and the second one is using flow charts in algorithm subject our major focus is on how we can specify we can write the algorithm using pseudo code notations using pseudo code notations pseudo code conventions or notations so let us see about the pseudo code conventions one by one next here any algorithm is divided into two sections the first section is algorithm heading the second section is algorithm body so we can divide an algorithm into two parts so first one is algorithm heading algorithm heading starts with a keyword called algorithm algorithm followed by name of the algorithm algorithm name and parameters parameters are specified within the parenthesis and with semicolon so parameter 1 parameter 2 likewise and with some semicolon now let's see an example for the algorithm heading let us assume that uh, we are writing algorithm for calculating some of the array elements so an algorithm heading starts with a keyword called algorithm so this is an example for the algorithm heading so algorithm heading starts with a keyword called algorithm next name of the algorithm let name of the algorithm is sum next within the parenthesis if we have more than one parameter then they are separated by comma so let, first one is array for array let we have a here data type variable declaration is not necessary okay so here a means array there is no need to declare it as integer why because we are not writing the program we are writing only algorithm so in algorithm data type variable declaration is not necessary next n so n means size of the array 
we know that algorithm heading is just like main function or a method or a function we know that uh, the function never ends with semicolon so likewise algorithm heading also never ends with semicolon so this is about what is algorithm heading next algorithm body the body of the algorithm must be enclosed inside the curly braces so now let us discuss about algorithm body so what are the statements that we can place inside the algorithm body so let's see one by one so first one is first statement is based on the comments a single line comment always starts with double forward slashes double forward slashes so here uh, if you want to place three statements in a comments then every statement begins with double forward slash double forward slash so likewise we have to write next second second statement is based on the blocks a block or block means what is a block collection of statements which are enclosed inside the curly braces a block or this can also be called as compound statement compound statement so compound statement means collection of simple statements so block can also be called as compound statement compound statement means we can place a collection of simple statements or a procedure what is a procedure a procedure is nothing but a function or a method so here a block or a compound statement or a procedure must always be enclosed inside the curly braces the next point is based on the identifiers identifier always begins with a letter it may be capital letter or lower case letter but it can't starts with a digit we can use a symbol called underscore in an identifier next every statement in algorithm terminates with semicolon every statement ends with semicolon next one more important point is data type variable declaration is not necessary so if you want to use a variable then directly we can use that variable there is no need to use the data types declaration of the variable is not necessary so next next statement is based on the arrays one dimensional array one dimensional array elements or you access with the help of a subscript just like the c programming language if you want to access with if you want to access example let's take if you want to access fifth element then we can use a of four why because we know that index will starts from 0 onwards whereas two dimensional array two dimensional array elements are accessed by single subscript only but the row and column are separated by comma in c language if we want to use a two dimensional array then we have to use program we have to use two subscripts so the first two subscript specifies row size the second subscript specifies column size whereas in algorithm only one subscript is enough but the row and column they are separated by comma now let's see the next point sixth point operators assignment operators assignment operators an assignment operator is denoted by colon equal to or reverse the arrow operator so we can use colon equal to or reverse the arrow operator let's take an example a colon equal to 10 or we can write this as a reverse the arrow 10 so we can use one of this approach but we can't use is equal to next one is uh, logical operators logical operators are denoted by and or not there is no need to use double n symbol double r symbol dot symbol they are denoted by and or not next one is relational operators relational operators relational operators are denoted by greater than next greater than or equal to next to less than less than or equal to for double is equal to for is equal to we can use single is equal to there is no need to use double is equal to so in algorithm single is equal to means relational operator equality operator 
whereas colon is equal to means assignment operator whereas for not equal to this is the symbol this is the symbol we know that relational operators and logical operators always returns a boolean value so boolean means it may return say that true or false next the next statements are based on the uh, control statements so let's see about the statements one by one so conditional statements first conditional statements uh, let's take the syntax the general form of conditional statements general form of conditional control statements so if we have simple if then we can write like this if within the angle brackets condition so this angle bracket specifies that it is our choice if we want we can use the we can place the condition inside the parenthesis or we can omit the parenthesis so this angle bracket specifies that this parenthesis is optional then statements then statements so this is the syntax for simple if whereas for if else if condition then statements after condition we have to use then next else statements else statements let's see an example if a greater than b so here we have angle brackets it is our choice if we want we can enclose the condition within the parenthesis or we can omit this parenthesis it is our choice if a greater than b then statements statements if we have one statement then curly braces are optional if we have more than one statement then it is better to place the statements within the curly braces so then within the curly braces place the body so print a is big print a is big okay every statement ends with semicolon else else we can say that print b is big okay it is your choice if you have only one statement then according to your choice you may use either curly braces or not okay here we have only one statement so curly braces are optional if you have more than one statement then it is better to place the statements within the uh, curly braces okay uh, next the next one is based on uh, uh, based on uh, um, switch here for switch we have to use case the keyword is case we don't have switch keyword case within the curly braces label for label or here we are calling label as condition so this condition is enclosed in colon symbol statement 1 next to colon condition 2 statement 2 last one for default here we can use else else so this is default statement so if the condition never matches with all these conditions then what what will happen else else block will be executed else is nothing but default block so this is about case uh, now let's see about looping statements here we have for loop while loop and repeat until loop so first let us focus on while loop so while here the syntax is while condition so angle brackets so it is our choice if we want uh, we can use the parenthesis or optional but while ends with do do within the curly braces statements if we have one statement then curly braces are optional more than one statement means it is better to use the curly braces let's take an example i is equal to 10 i is equal to 1 next to while i less than n do do uh, for print of for printing the data here we can use a write statement or print statement also okay right so we uh, we are printing i value i value next i is equal to i colon equal to i plus 1 for uh, for uh, assignment operator we have to use colon equal to or reverse dr okay likewise we can use the while loop now let us focus on for loop for loop so here the syntax for the for loop is like this so for for variable name variable colon equal to value 1 to to value 2 next next one is step step and for loop ends with do 
within the curly braces statements. So what is the syntax for variable colon? Variable, this is some variable name. So for example, for i colon equal to 0, this is value 1 means initial value. 2, value 2 means final value. Next, step step are for incrementation. Step step is optional. It is your choice. Generally, these two keywords are not used while writing the algorithm. So, step step is optional. Next, to do. Next, print. Print i value. So, what will happen? First, 0 will be printed. Next, step count. By default, the step count is plus 1. So, next 1 will be printed, 2 will be printed. Likewise, up to 10 will be printed. Okay. Now, let us see about uh, repeat until. Repeat until. Here, repeat until is somewhat different. So, repeat. Here, for repeat until, curly braces are not necessary. Not necessary. Next, statements. Until of condition. This until never ends with semicolon. Okay. So, first what will happen? The statements will be executed. After that, condition will be evaluated. Here, the body, the statements will be printed. The body will be executed. As long as the condition is false. That is the difference here. Generally, when the condition is true, then only the body will be executed. But here it is different. Here the body, the statements will be executed as long as the condition is false. Let's take an example. Let us assume that we want to print the numbers from 1 to 5. Then what is the example? Repeat statements. So print i or write i or write i. Next until what is the condition? Generally, in order to print from 1 to 5, we will write i less than 5. But here the body will be executed as long as the condition is false. So instead of less than, we have to write greater than. So what is the initial value of i? What is the initial value of i? 1. i equal to 1. i reverse the arrow 1. So here the body will be executed minimum once, just like do while loop. So first what will happen? 1 will be printed. Next 1 greater than 5. 1 greater than 5. So condition is 1 greater, yeah, it is better to use the increment operator i, i arrow i plus 1. So first 1 will be printed. Next i will become 2. 2 greater than 5. Condition is false. So the body will be executed. So 2 will be printed. Next i will become 3. 3 greater than 5. False. So likewise the body will be printed. Uh, so according to our requirement, we, we, we may use greater than or greater than or equal to. So here the difference is the body will be executed as long as the condition is false. Next, last statement. For input, for reading purpose, we have to use input statement or read statement. Whereas for displaying purpose, we can use output statement or in place of read, we can use write statement. So for input, input or read, for output, output or write. Okay. So this is about pseudocode notation while writing the algorithms.